In the realm of Sonic Nirvana, there exists a hallowed sanctum that surpasses all imagination, a room so meticulously crafted it transforms sound into a tangible, ethereal entity. Here, every note dances upon the air with sublime clarity. Every instrument resonates with a depth that awakens dormant emotions. This cathedral of sound is adorned with velvet curtains that whisper as they sway, and golden chandeliers that bathe the room in a warm, enchanting glow. The reverberations of each chord reverberate through your very being, as if the music has woven itself into the fabric of your soul. In this realm, you're not just a listener, you are a witness to the symphony of existence. And so, fellow audiophiles, I want you to know that you don't have the best listening room in the world. I do. I haven't talked about listening rooms much in my channel, yet, but I fully intend to. I have, of course, mentioned the listening room as a concept. As in my prologue, it's a special place where audiophiles go to listen to music. Normal people, normies in internet slang, don't have a listening room. They listen wherever, whenever. And, as I've learned from comments on my videos, many are happy to listen in mono on a single speaker phone. So, how does anyone manage without a listening room? Well, actually, they seem to manage quite well. Perhaps they are just woefully misguided people who don't care about audio. They don't care about audio, just music. Oh well, we can't all be perfect and we can't all have the perfect listening room, but I can. <laughs> I think by now you can sense where I'm going with this. High fidelity or hi-fi can be summarised in the golden era sales slogan of a classic manufacturer, the closest approach to the original sound. Quad, by the way. So as audiophiles, many of us yearn for that in our listening rooms. Many will spend tens of thousands on equipment, a hundred thousand perhaps, and some will even acoustically treat their listening rooms. But the closest approach to the original sound, it will always be the closest approach. To get any closer, you need the original sound. The original sound, the sound of music, not audio. Let's go outdoors. So, audiophiles, what do you think about my listening room? It's the best listening room in the world. <laughs> No, my green screen hasn't suddenly had an upgrade. This is the genuine Royal Albert Hall in genuine London, featuring the genuine BBC Promenade Concerts, familiarly known as the Proms. A Promenade Concert, by the way, is where you stand to listen. There are plenty of seats in the Albert Hall, but the best way to enjoy the experience is in the arena, which has standing space for a thousand. This is pure, perfect sound, with no hi-fi getting in the way particularly no speakers. So, what's on the bill tonight? So tonight I'll be listening to Brooks Violin Concerto, Bartok's Concerto for Orchestra, and various other pieces. I hope your hi-fi sounds as good. <laughs> to show you what else you're missing, and I get a view of the wonderful Albert Memorial, which has some interesting people, and a better view from the front. The proms used to be famous for their queues. For the last night of the season, the last night of the proms, people would queue overnight. Things are more civilised now. You don't have to queue continuously now. You turn up and get a raffle ticket, literally the type of ticket that's used for raffles with your number on it, your position in the queue. Then go away and enjoy Kensington Gardens perhaps, and then come back before the concert starts. You compare raffle ticket numbers with others in the queue and find your place. As I said, it's very civilised. I normally turn up around 3.30 for a 7.30 start, and I expect to be numbering in the 40s, which puts me in the second row. We're not really in rows, but there'll only be the early birds clutching at the rail in front of me. Funny story. I went inside to get my raffle ticket. Two ladies at the desk. Betty and Debbie will play their roles. May I have a raffle ticket, please? Certainly, sir. You'll be number 48 in the queue. Are you sure you'll be able to hold out standing all the way through? My reply, I may look old and wizened, but I won't have any problem. Do we now have to pass a physical to get in? <laughs> anyway, I like to get back to the queue before it starts to bunch up. It looks thin on the ground at the moment, but there'll be 5,000 people in the Albert Hall when the concert starts. Sometimes before I join, I'm tempted by a ham, cheese and mustard panini. Panino? In the cafe bar. Or a pastry. Or a cake. 
And we're in altogether a very musical part of London. And coincidentally, we're right opposite the Royal College of Music. I can admire the architecture. And every concert broadcast live by the BBC. What I've noticed is that there are around 100, 120 hardcore promise. The arena will be full when the concert starts, but most people turn up just before. They just want to be in the arena and they're not too concerned about being close. I like being close to the performers. It's louder. Over to me. Between leaving the house and the start of the concert, for me, it's five hours. And compared to some promise, I'm a mere amateur. So this is where the excitement starts and the queue starts to move. <laughs> so I get to listen to beautiful music without any hi-fi getting in the way. And of course, the acoustic treatment is amazing. This is Sir Henry Wood, founder of the Proms back in 1985 and some pre-concert atmosphere. All lovingly broadcast by the BBC. I think I need a new iPhone with a better camera. We're going to hear Kim Bomsori, mononymically known just as Bomsori, and Anya Billmeyer conducting the BBC Philharmonic. So the hall's filling up nicely. And as I said, there's room for more than 5,000 people in here. See you after the concert. Not bad, and the sound from BBC television isn't bad either. Not as good as in the best listening room in the world, but very adequate. I'll have more to say about this in a future video. And let me have the last word. So a good time was had by all, with none of that hi-fi getting in the way. No pollution from turntables, cartridges, preamps, DAX, power amps, but most of all, <laughs> most of all loudspeakers. Just pure, perfect sound in the perfect listening room. See you soon. He was doing this all afternoon and evening, and he says no one batted an eyelid. Except that old lady who wanted his autograph. I think she thought he was someone else.